Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hi everyone, my name is Imas Masito. I'm from Matau Anga University, Faculty of Teacher Training and Education, the Semester of English Education Department. Here, I will tell a story of the people from Cibaliu. Yes, it is the legend of the stone Nijompong. Once upon a time, during the Dutch colonial era, in a village there was a very beautiful girl. The only child from a farming family who lived in property, Nijompong. That's the name of a village girl whose beauty is known to every youth. She never cared about her beauty and the flattery of the youth. That day the sun saw its beauty that slipped between the thick trees like Nijompong the morning. She bathes and washes clothes in a spring on the outskirts of the village with the village girls who are actually jealous of Nijompong's beauty. Moreover, that morning the sun seemed to understand its beauty. The batik patterned clothes he wears with a distinctive smile makes every young man who sees it amazing. The sun began to rise, Ni Jompong and the other village girls began to return to their respective homes. Yay, yay. Ni Jompong fires called out to him who had just finished drying his clothes. Ka, I am Ryoginan, Pa, answered Eden Sundanese. Ni Jompong met his father who at the time was busy sucking. Udut. Nyai, dinten iu nyai tekedah kak sawah. His father's orders. His father's order, ya. Nyi Jompong looked and confused because he usually helped his father and mother in the fields every day to prepare lunch. So calmly, his father replied, Nyai dinten iu nyai nutu parewahe. Nyi Jompong know that if the rice supply is running out, Nyi Jompong only answered it with a note accompanied by a smile and then she replies with a smile from her mother who has been silent for a while listening, listening to their conversation. His parents left the house to go to the rice fields, which were quite far away. While Yi Jompong began to prepare for his work, a long mortar with rice that looked shiny yellow began to be pounded to the rhythm of a Ching Chang Kling song. So melodiously liberating, flying dream to Nirvana. While pounding rice, a young man appeared with definite step with a burly body towards Nijompong's house. But Nijompong pretended not to notice the young man arrival. He just kept pounding rice. Nyai, ajen parantos membuat hati kau lah tetangtu. The chatter of the young man named Jiriwis. Nyai Jompong continued to work without ever paying attention to what Jiriwis was talking about. He knew that Jiriwis was a young man whose proposal had been rejected several times and had fought with other youths several times and had never been defeated. So no one dared to forbid him from saying Nyi Jompong. As is the custom of the youth in the village when visiting a girl's house, he will play the flute in front of the girl he wants. Likewise with Chiriwis who never gave who never gave up on attracting the heart of Nijompong, the beautiful village flower. The sacrifice of Chiriwis who risk his life to get Nijompong by defeating all his people actual big fire. Because 
the jompong does not want to be used as a bed for the village child, and he had never thought of having a company. The melodious strains of Chiriwis flute were interrupted by the sound of a tong tong. The voice indicated the voice indicated that the uh, day was the day when the villager had to pay tribute to the Dutch government in the form of crop. The Dutch soldiers entered every house to collect tribute. Even though they did not hesitate to bring and touch the crop, there were screams of girls who were being treated inappropriately by the Dutch soldiers. My lord, pardon! The girls cry and beg for forgiveness. But what can the soldiers do who have long left their with in their country? So that they have not fulfilled the, their biological need for a long time. Nyi Jongpong looks scared. He went into the house leaving his job and then closed the door. But the Dutch soldiers were already fascinated by Nyi Jongpong's beauty. Hi Nyi, hurry up and let's make love. One of the Dutch soldiers shouted, banging, banging on the door of Nyi Jongpong's house. Jerry was standing at the time shouted, Hey, you diamond kissy woman! The soldier turned and sped in front of Chiribis. Oh, you want to be a hero apparently, he said, laughing. <laughs> but Chiribis' hard blow had already hit the Deutsch soldier's face, so he fell down helplessly. Chiribis shrugged and muttered, You dare, you dare this job, the village flower will become my wife. Realizing that one of their soldiers had fallen, fallen, the soldier ganged up on Chiribis, but in fine they did because they were too weak to fight Chiribis. Just go away, tell your superiors, don't ever dream of beating me, chattering, threatening, threatening Chiribis. Finally, they left the village. The situation in the village was so precarious that day. While the Jompong did not dare to leave the house on until her parents came when the sun was setting. Her mother knew her daughter had gone through something because it could be seen from the frightening look in her face. Nyai, ayo naon. Nyai kan katingalina. Khawatir. Bimbang. Ketakutan. Nyi Jompong lowered her face. Ayo nao nyai, her mother asked again. Er, earlier, the Dutch master ran second, ran second the village, answered Nyai Jompong haltingly. His father was silent and only took a deep breath because he too had relief when he entered the village many girls were crying. The Jongpong family and the village were haunted by fear, so the night seemed so long. Until finally, the sound of chickens was heard in a fairy residence house, signaling the end of the night. Of the night. The sun began to see the sea juice and lure the bird in the trees to sing and sing. There was there was a news that a young man had did with a bullet hole in his head. All the villagers realized that the one killed was Chiriwis, a young man who yesterday defeated all the Dutch soldiers, and all concluded that it was the Dutch who had carried out the killing because they were the only ones with guns at the time. After some time, a man on horseback with some of his bodyguard arrived, who was none other than the Dutch master. Hey, villagers, 
I know there's a beautiful woman here, the big master said without getting off his horse. All the residents did not answer. The only glance at Nyi Jompong Wu was standing and feeling scared. You, Nyai, Tuan Besar pointed at Nyi Jompong as he got off the horse and went to meet Nyai Jompong. Meanwhile, Nyi Jompong looked down while holding her father's hands tightly. Nyi, will Nyai be my wife? The Dutch master said firmly. Meanwhile, Nyi Jompong is getting more and more scared. Big master, I can fulfill your request, sir. Firmly, his father who was haunted by fear. The big master held back his anger and still tried to say, Nyai, if the Nyai becomes my wife, my wife, then the Nyai will live heavily. But Nyi Jompong didn't answer. Feel really lost in her soul. Well, if my application is rejected, I accept it. The big lord said with a sinister smile and left the village. When noon came, the people started to get busy again with their work. Even so, they continued to talk to talk about what had happened. Air liar continued to talk to talk about what had happened. Air liar. Ibu, Bapa, Abdi, dan Tuan Ilmu Kastawa. Nyi Jompong's father voice told his daughter. It is a custom of for Nyi Jompong to eat with tutut, you know, tutut. <laughs> a kind of small black couch fall in the rice file and usually consumed by villagers without spending any money to get it. His parents looked at each other before finally allowing him to live without anyone accompanying him. Nyi Jompong went to the rice file to take to the si Rao Kuboko, Hasupan, and Meishin. Nyi Jompong collects a lot of tutut by cleaning the back of the tutut first before cutting it in the boboko. Realizing that there was a great danger, Nyi Jompong ran and was chased by the master while lounging with satisfaction so that Nyi Jompong's husband fell. He ran faster and faster without stopping so that his machine and boboko fell which contained a tireless tutut. Finally, Nyi Jombong was cornered in a steep ravine. He also fell into a ra ravine, ravine with three colossians which resulted in Nyi Jombong being killed with his body parts parted. Nyi Jombong's death is a lesson that a girl must protect herself and her family's honor. Honor? Because honor cannot be traded. It is better to die in, the, in defense of honor than to live in disgrace. The incident has now become a place known to local residents. Hasufan Yi Jompong Wu fell. Now that place is called the people of Louis Hasupan. The me the machine that fell become Louis Arit. Because the machine in that area was usually called call it the Arit. Then the fallen Boboko and his tutut become Louis Boboko, and it is believed that in Louis Boboko, there is a living tutut without a tile. The place where Nyi Jompong fell was then called the Nyi Jompong Waterfall. The waterfall in, Indo in Indonesia is called the Waterfall. One part of Nyi Jompong's body is said to have turned into stone, which is only in the form of a reproductive organ that emits water. There are even local residents who say that they used to bleed every morning as a sign of menstruation. Then, because now they are old, they no longer have menstruation, men of house. Other evidence around the place is that there are horse treed and treed on long ropes as well as cone treed on the stone at the location. And until now, the name Nyi Jompong is used as the name of the front group, Gudep, at 
uh, SMA N, 5, Pandeglang, Pandeglang in Cibaliu District. Such is the story of Nijompo, the people of Cibaliu, Pandeglang District. Hopefully, it can be prepared, preserved, and learned from. Thank you. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.